G'day everyone. This is just a video, a follow-up video to the to the PCB etching video I did a couple of years back. Uh, I'll leave a link to that one if you want to watch that one first, just to get the basic process down. There's just a couple of um, modifications to that to get a better etch. The first one is the paper that you use uh, to, to, to copy your, your image onto. Uh, in the video I use magazine paper. Magazine paper will work as well, but I found that you get a better etch when you use some of this sticker backing paper. This is Avery sticker backing paper, as you can see it's shiny. Um, this is from our, our office um, w when we send out letters. Uh, you've got the little, the little um, square address labels, there's about 16 on a page. When the page is used up, um, you've just got this backing paper. The toner comes off this stuff really easy. You don't have to heat it nowhere near as much as you do with magazine paper where you've really got to heat the crap out of it. Um, with this stuff, it just comes off pretty easily, um, probably a third of the time. Um, so, you know, you're not applying as much heat to the PCB, which is good. And you can also almost get away with using some of this Tadar PCB, which I've said, uh, I think it's FR2, uh, the non-fiberglass type. I've said you can't use this stuff with magazine paper before because when you use it with the other magazine paper, it heats up so much that the copper actually lifts off the um, off the substrate, which is which is terrible. Well, actually, I've had it before. I've been doing a large etch, and as a massive bubble appears, and um, the copper just lifts up. So that's obviously not going to work. But when you use the sticker backing paper, because you don't you don't heat it for as long, it doesn't do that. So you can use it. Still not impressed with it though, because the the, the tracks come up on it so easy. I, they, they lift all the time. I'd rather use fiberglass, um, the FR4 instead of FR2, but um, you can use it though um, with the sticker backing paper. So there's one other tip um, which I'll show you once I've actually um, etched this image, um, how to remove the toner from the from the copper tracks. Uh, it's, it's much easier and you don't get that blackening that you get. Just see if I've got a PCB as an example um, in my um, in my box here and show you what I mean by blackening. Here's a perfect example. You can see down the bottom corner there, it's all black. That's the toner that's come off the track when I've used um, uh, turpentine or acetone to remove the toner from the track. Um, it lets go of the track, but then it sticks to the fiberglass. And once it's, once it's stuck down, you just cannot get it off. It's just stuck there and, and it blackens the PCB and it doesn't look very presentable. Um, it's because it melts the toner and the toner then just will just shift off the track as I said and stick to the um, and stick to the substrate. So there's a better way of getting that off and I'll show you that in a moment. I'll just etch the board and then I'll show you. One thing I forgot to mention with this um, sticker backing paper actually, uh, a bit of a disadvantage is that the, firstly the toner can come off very easily. Pretty sure if I wipe it just like that, it's coming off. It'll just it'll come off with little effort. Effort, and um, if you've got thin lines on your um, on your image, they will just they will just scratch off very easily. So you've got to be careful with how you hold it um, and how how you handle it. Um, and you know, just when you're transporting or whatever, just make sure that you um, that you don't bend the pages or anything like that. It's not gonna it's not gonna survive. Um, and the other thing is too that with my particular backing paper, there's a there's sort of like a uh, it's kind of perforated so that you can actually tear it apart. Like if I just, I don't need this bit, so I'll just show you what I mean. You can see that it just comes apart like that, and that often leaves some gaps on the tracks of the uh, of the of the layout. So if yours does that too, just make sure you can actually see at the top there. There's a little bit of a, a little bit of a gap there. Um, once you've once you've copied it onto the onto the copper. Make sure that you haven't got any of those little little gaps around on your track because if you've got a gap, one of those gaps on a track or something, it's just going to kill it. So yeah, just just be careful when you actually when you actually copy it on um, to just look out for that. Another big advantage of this um, sticker backing paper too is how easy it comes off. Um, there's no scrubbing like you have to with um, with magazine uh, magazine paper. Look at that, this comes off beautifully. <clears throat> Perfect.
well, you know, maybe not totally perfect. There's a couple of tracks there that I'm going to have to hit with the um, Sharpie. You can see that line that I was talking about before. Um, if I can get some sticker backing paper that doesn't do that, it's going to be it's going to make my life a bit easier. But um, the results are a million times better than with um, with magazine paper. All the you have to scratch the holes out like with the other one. Um, it's just pretty much ready to go. Apart from those little fix-ups, it's um, it's pretty much ready to etch. It goes on easier. The paper comes off easier. Yeah, it's just a win-win situation. So yeah, anyway, back to, um, we'll look at how to get the toner off once I've done the etch now. So that's the etch board with the toner still on it. Got a bit rough in the middle there because of those lines I was saying before. There's a line going straight through the middle, unfortunately. You have to find another source for that, st that stick of backing paper that doesn't have those um, that perforation line down the middle. Um, but turned out okay. Um, so we've just got to remove that toner now and um, uh, I used to use acetone, which I don't anymore, like I said before. It kind of melts the toner and just spreads it all over the um, board and makes it look pretty crappy. But what you can do is, this tip is actually from Dead Astronaut. Um, I'll leave a link to his um, channel. Um, but to use some old sandpaper um, that's kind of you know, worn down a bit, some light, very low, um, low grain um, sandpaper, and uh, yeah, just sand it off in, in water, pretty much just wet sand it. I just give it a little bit of a rub with that. Um, and then I just use some of this 4-0 um, steel wool and just finish it off with that. <clears throat> Don't go too mental with it because remember you, you're removing copper when you're using those, um, uh, those materials to remove the toner. Um, but I find the 4-0, finishing with the 4-0 um, steel wool, Gives a bit more of a polished kind of look, whereas the um, whereas the sand um, sanding it alone will just leave a sort of a rough top. Um, but yeah, comes up pretty good. So that's it for the updates. Um, yeah, just a few new ways I've um, come across to improve the process. Uh, you end up with a pretty good looking board without that black stuff all over it, and um, yeah, they're easier to etch. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more electronics and guitar pedal related videos, tutorials and demos. Thanks for watching.